first day of mary tudor by victor hugo this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org dramatis personae mary tudor the queen read by christine g jane talbot read by beth thomas gilbert read by todd fabiano fabiani read by eden ray hedrick simon renard read by bob newfeld joshua farnaby read by peter tucker the man read by rob board lord clinton read by alan mapstone lord shandos read by elizabeth clatt lord montague read by g m Prizwara master aeneas dulverton read by rob board lord chancellor read by joseph tabler jailer read by elizabeth clatt the people voices read by michelle fry voices of the people read by shakira searle the people slash voices read by mary Kay. standard bearer read by shakira searle standard bearer two read by mary k narrated by lambda first day a man of the people scene border of the thames a deserted strand an old parapet in ruins conceals the borders of the water to the right a house of mean appearance at the corner of this house a statuette of virgin at whose feet burns a wick in an iron lattice in the background beyond the themes london two high buildings are seen the tower of london and westminster the sun is setting scene one several men are grouped here and there on the strand among whom are simon renard john bridges baron chandos robert clinton anthony brown viscount of montagu you are right my lord this damned italian must have bewitched the queen she can't exist without him she lives only for him finds pleasure only in him listens only to him if a day passes without seeing him her eyes droop as they did when she loved cardinal polis you remember she is very much in love it is true and consequently very jealous the italian has bewitched her for a fact they say that people of his nationality have filters for that purpose the spanish are clever at poisons which kill people the italians are clever at poisons which make people fall in love then fabiani is spanish and italian at the same time the queen is in love and is ill he has made her drink both as to that is he really spanish or italian it appears certain that he was born in italy in the capitanate and that he was brought up in spain he claims to be connected with a great spanish family lord clinton has the story at his fingertips an adventurer neither spanish nor italian and still less english thank god these men without a country have no pity on a country when they become powerful didn't you say the queen was ill chandos that does not hinder her from leading a very gay life with her favourite a gay life a gay life the people weep while the queen laughs and the favourite is gorged this man eats silver and drinks gold the queen has given him the estates of lord talbot the great lord talbot the queen has made him earl of clanbrazil and baron of dinasmondi this fabiano fabiani who says he belongs to the spanish family of penalver and who lies when he says it he is an english peer like you montague like you shandos like stanley like norfolk 
like myself like the king he has the garter the same as the infanta of portugal as the king of denmark as thomas percy seventh earl of northumberland and what a tyrant is this tyrant who rules us from his bed never did such a curse rest upon england and yet i have seen much i who am old there are seventy new gallows at tyburn the stakes are always embers and never ashes the executioner's axe is sharp every morning and blunted every night every day some great nobleman is slaughtered the day before yesterday it was blantyre yesterday north curry to-day south repo to-morrow tyrconnell next week it will be you shandos and next month it will be only my lords my lords it is shameful and outrageous that all these honest english heads should fall to please a miserable adventurer who does not even belong to our country it is a frightful and unbearable thing to think that a neapolitan favourite can drag as many blocks as he likes from under the queen's bed these two lead a gay life you say my heaven it is infamous ah they lead a gay life these lovers while the headsman at their door makes widows and orphans oh their italian guitar is too well accompanied by the clank of chains madame queen you send to the chapel of avignon for your singers every day in your palace you have comedies plays and a stage crowded with musicians upon my life madame less joy at your house and less mourning at ours if you please fewer dances there and fewer executioners here fewer farces at westminster and fewer scaffolds at tyburn have a care my lord clinton we are loyal subjects not a word against the queen everything against fabiani simon renard laying his hand on lord clinton's shoulder have patience patience that is easy enough for you to say mr simon reynard you are bailiff of amont in franche comte subject of the emperor and his ambassador in london you represent the prince of spain the queen's future husband your person is sacred to the favourite but it is different with us you see for you fabiani is the lover for us he's the butcher it is night this man troubles me as much as you you trouble only for your life i trouble for my power that means much more i do not talk i act i feel less anger than you perhaps but i feel more hate i will destroy the favourite yes but how to do it i think of it all day it is not in the daytime that the favourites of queens are made and unmade it is at night this night is dark and frightful i find it good for what i wish to do what do you mean to do you shall see my lord chandos when a woman reigns caprice reigns politics are no longer a matter of calculation then but of chance you can count upon nothing to-day does not logically bring to-morrow public affairs are no longer like a game of chess but a game of cards that is all very well but let us come to the point when will you deliver us from the favourite time is pressing to-morrow tyrconnell will be beheaded if i find the man i am looking for to-night tyrconnell will sup with you to-morrow what do you mean what will have become of fabiani have you good eyes my lord yes although i am old and the night is dark do you see london on the other side of the water yes why look well from here you can see the height and the depth of every favourite's fortune 
Westminster, and the Tower of London. Well? If God is with me, there is a man who at this moment is yet there, pointing to Westminster, and who tomorrow at the same time will be here, pointing to the Tower. Pray God be with you. The people hate him no less than we do. What a festival will his fall make in London? We have placed ourselves in your hands, Sir Bailiff. Dispose of us. What must we do? Simon Renard, indicating a house near to the water. You all see that house? It is the house of Gilbert, the engraver. Do not lose sight of it. Now, go away with your people, but don't go too far. Above all, do nothing without me. It is agreed. They all exit at different sides. Simon Renard, alone. The man I need is not easy to find. He exits. Jane and Gilbert enter, arm in arm. They go toward the house. Joshua Parnaby, enveloped in a long cloak, accompanies them. Scene 2 I must leave you here, my good friends. It is midnight, and I must go back to my post of turnkey of the Tower of London. I'm not as free as you are, you see. A turnkey is only another kind of prisoner. Goodbye, Jane. Goodbye, Gilbert. Ah, oh, my friends, how glad I am to see you happy. When is the wedding, Gilbert? In one week, isn't it, Jane? Faith! Day after tomorrow is Christmas. This is the day of good wishes and presents, but I have nothing to wish you. It would be impossible to wish more beauty to the bride or more love to the bridegroom. You are fortunate. Good Joshua. And you, are you not happy? Neither happy nor unhappy. As for me, I've given up everything. Look you, Gilbert. Opening his cloak and disclosing a bunch of keys hanging to his belt. Prison keys are always jingling at your side talk to you, suggest all sorts of philosophical ideas to you. When I was young, I was like the rest, in love for a day, ambitious for a month, mad a whole year. It was during the reign of Henry the Eighth that I was young. Strange man, that Henry the Eighth, a man who changed his wives as a woman changes her dresses. He repudiated the first, had the second beheaded, had the third's womb cut open. As for the fourth, he had mercy on her. He sent her off. But for revenge he had the fifth head cut off. This isn't the story of Bluebeard I'm telling you, my beautiful Jane. It's the history of Henry VIII. In those days I interested myself in the religious wars. I fought first for one side and then for the other. That was the wisest thing to do. My whole business was very ticklish. It was whether to be for or against the Pope. The King's officers hanged those who were for, but they burned those who were against. The neutral people... Those who neither were for nor against, they hanged them or they burned them indiscriminately. We managed as we could. Yes, the rope. No, the faggot. I, who am speaking to you, I smelled of burning very often, and I'm not sure that I was not unhanged two or three times. Those were great times, very much like the times now. The devil take me if I know now whom I fought for or what I fought about. If people speak to me now about Master Luther and Pope Paul the Third, I shrug my shoulders. You see, Gilbert, when a man has grey hairs, he shouldn't go back to the opinions he fought for, nor the women he loved when he was twenty. The women and the opinions will seem very ugly, very old, very paltry, very silly, very much wrinkled and out of date. Such is my history. Now I'm through with public affairs. I'm no longer the King's soldier nor the Pope's soldier. I'm jailer of the Tower of London. I don't fight any more for anybody, and I put everybody under log and key. I'm turnkey, and I am old. I have one foot in a prison, and the other in the grave. I'm the one who picks up the remnants of all the ministers and favourites who go to pieces in the Queen's Palace. It's very amusing. I have also a little child, whom I love, and you both whom I love too. And if you are happy, I am happy also. If that is the case, you can be happy, can't he, Jane? 
i can't do anything to add to your happiness but jane can do everything you love her i may never be able to do anything for you fortunately for you you are not high and mighty enough to ever need the help of the turnkey of the tower of london jane will pay my debt at the same time that she pays her own because she and i owe everything to you jane was but a poor child a forsaken orphan you took her home and brought her up i was drowning in the thames one fine day and you dragged me out of the water why do you always talk about that joshua in order to tell you that our duty jane's and mine is to love you i as a brother and she not as a sister no as a woman i understand you joshua she sinks back into a reverie look at her joshua is she not beautiful and attractive and is she not worthy of a king if you only knew you cannot imagine how i love her be careful it is dangerous a woman should not be loved so much as that with a child it is different what do you mean nothing i will be at your wedding next week i hope state affairs will leave me a little liberty then and that everything will be finished how what will be finished oh, these things do not interest you gilbert you're in love you belong to the people what do the intrigues of the high-born matter to you who are happy among the low-born but since you ask me i will tell you that within one week perhaps within twenty-four hours it is hoped that fabiano fabiani's place near the queen will be filled by another who is fabiano fabiani the queen's lover a very celebrated and a very fascinating favorite a favorite who has had his enemies heads chopped off with greater dispatch than a procurus can repeat an ave the best favorite that the executioner of the tower of london has had for ten years for you must know that every great lord's head that falls brings in ten silver crowns to the executioner sometimes twice as much when the head is very distinguished the fall of this fabiani is greatly desired though i must say during my duties at the tower it is only the bad-tempered people whom i hear find fault with him the discontented people those whose heads are to fall next month let the wolves rend each other what do we care about the queen and the queen's favourite isn't it so jane there is a big conspiracy against fabiani if he escapes he will be lucky i should not be surprised if they were to strike some blow to-night i just saw master simon renard prowling about here very much absorbed who is master simon renard is it possible that you don't know he is the emperor's right hand at london the queen is to marry the prince of spain and simon renard is his ambassador to her the queen hates him this simon renard but she's afraid of him and she can't do anything to him he's already destroyed two or three favorites it seems to be his instinct to destroy favourites he clears up the palace from time to time he is a shrewd and spiteful man he knows all that goes on and he digs two or three subterranean rows of intrigues under every event as for lord paget didn't you ask me who is lord paget he is a crafty nobleman who helped to manage affairs under henry the eighth he is a member of the secret council he has such an ascendancy that the other ministers do not dare to breathe in his presence except however the chancellor my lord gardiner who detests him a violent man this gardiner and well born as for paget he was nobody a cobbler's son he is to be made baron paget of bow desert in stafford how glibly he tells all these things this joshua my faith it's from hearing the prisoners of state talk simon renard appears at the back of stage you see gilbert the man who knows most about the history of these times is the turnkey of the tower of london simon renard who overhears these last words you are mistaken my master it is the executioner joshua low to gilbert and jane let us move back a little simon renard goes off slowly when he has disappeared that is master simon renard himself i don't like to have all these men prowling around my house what the devil is he doing here i must hurry back i think he's getting work ready for me good-bye gilbert good-bye my beautiful jane i knew you when you were no bigger than that all the same good-bye joshua what are you hiding there under your cloak i've got my conspiracy too what conspiracy 
oh lover who forgets everything else i've just reminded you that the day after tomorrow is the time for christmas presents the nobles are plotting a surprise for fabiani well i am plotting a surprise too the queen may give herself the present of a brand new favorite i am going to give my child a doll brand new too we will see which will be the first to break a toy god keep you my friends goodbye joshua joshua departs gilbert takes jane's hand and kisses it with passion joshua from back of stage how wise is providence she gives to each one his plaything the doll to the child the child to the man the man to the woman and the woman to the devil scene three i must go too Goodbye, Jane. Sleep well. You are not coming in with me tonight, Gilbert. I can't. You know, I told you before, Jane. I have some work to do in my shop tonight. I must engrave the handle of a dagger for some Lord Cambrassel, whom I have never seen, and who wants it tomorrow morning. Then, good night, Gilbert. Until tomorrow. No, Jane. Wait a moment. Heaven, how it hurts me to leave you, even for a few hours. How true it is that you are my life and my joy. Yet I have to work. We are so poor. I won't go in, because I should stay. And yet I can't leave you, weak man that I am. Let us sit down by the door a few moments, on this bench. I think it will be easier to go from here than if I went into the house, and, above all, into your room. Give me your hand. He sits and takes her hands in us. She stands. Jane, do you love me? Oh, I owe you everything, Gilbert. I know it, although you have concealed it from me a long time when i was little almost in my cradle my parents abandoned me and you took me for sixteen years your hand has worked for me as if you were a father your eyes have watched over me like a mother what would i be without you just heaven all i have you have given me all i am you have made me jane do you love me what devotion yours has been gilbert you work for me night and day you wear your eyes out you kill yourself for me you are going to sit up all night again to-night and never a reproach to me never an unkindness never an angry word you are very poor yet you remember all my small womanly vanities you gratify them gilbert whenever i think about you my eyes fill with tears you have often gone without bread i have never gone without my ribbons jane do you love me gilbert i would like to kneel down and kiss your feet do you love me do you love me all that does not prove that you love me i want that word jane gratitude always gratitude oh i stamp it underfoot your gratitude i want love or nothing die jane you have been my daughter for sixteen years now you are to be my wife i adopted you now i am to marry you in one week you know you promised me you have consented you are my betrothed you loved me when you promised that oh jane there was a time do you remember it when you told me i love you and you lifted your sweet eyes to heaven that is the way i want you to be for some months now you have seemed different especially during the last three weeks that my work has kept me away from here nights jane i must have you love me i am used to it you were always so light-hearted now you are sad and absent-minded not cold my poor child you try your best not to be but i feel your loving words do not come as tenderly and as naturally as they used what is the matter don't you love me any more i know i am an honest man i know i am a good workman but i would rather be a robber and an assassin and be loved by you jane if you knew how much i love you i know it gilbert and it makes me weep for joy isn't it say it is for joy oh i need to believe it there is only that in the world to be loved i have only a poor working man's heart but my jane must love me why do you always talk to me about what i have done for you one single word of love from you puts all the gratitude on my side i will damn myself and commit a crime whenever you wish it you will be my wife won't you and you love me oh jane for one look of your eyes i would give my work and my labor for one smile my life for one kiss my soul what a noble heart you have gilbert listen to me jane laugh at me if you will i am mad i am jealous 
I will tell you why. Do not get angry. It seems to me for some time I have seen several young lords prowling around here. Do you know, Jane, I am thirty-two years old. For a poor, clumsy, badly dressed workman like myself, who am no longer young, who am not handsome, what a misery it is to love a charming, beautiful girl of seventeen, who attracts all the handsome, gold-bedizened young nobles around her, as a light attracts the butterflies. Oh, I suffer, indeed I do. But I never blame you, even in my thoughts. You, so honest, so pure. You, whose brow has never been touched except by my lips. I only feel sometimes that you look on the Queen's cavalcades and retinues with too much pleasure, that you enjoy too much the fine suits of velvet and satin, under which there are no hearts, no souls. Forgive me, my God, why do so many young noblemen come around here? Why am I not handsome, young, noble, rich? Gilbert the engraver, that is all I am. They are Lord Chandos, Lord Gerard Fitzgerard, Earl of Arundel, the Duke of Norfolk, Oh, how I hate them! I spend my life engraving the handles of their swords, which I would like to plunge into their bowels. Gilbert! I beg your pardon, Jane. Love makes us very wicked, doesn't it? No, very good, for you are good, Gilbert. Oh, how much I love you! It increases every day. I would like to die for you. Love me or not, you can do as you please. I am mad. Forgive all that I have said. It is late. I must leave you. Good-bye. Oh, how I hate to leave you. Go in. Haven't you your key? No, I haven't had it for several days. Take mine. Until tomorrow morning. Jane, don't forget this. Today I am still your father. In one week I shall be your husband. He kisses her on the forehead and exits. Jane, alone. My husband? Oh, no. I will never commit that crime. Poor Gilbert, he loves me truly, and the other, ah, uh, provided I have not preferred vanity to love, unhappy woman that I am, into whose power have I fallen, oh, I am most thankless and most guilty. I hear footsteps. Let me get in quickly. Goes into house. Scene 4. Gilbert. A man enveloped in a cloak and wearing a yellow cap. The man holds Gilbert by the hand. Yes, I recognize you. You are the Jewish beggar who has been prowling around this house for several days. What do you want with me? Why have you taken hold of my hand? And why have you brought me back here? Because what I have to say to you, I can only say here. Well, what is it? Speak. Hurry. Listen, young man. One night, sixteen years ago, Lord Talbot, Earl of Waterford, was beheaded by torchlight for the crimes of popery and rebellion while his followers were cut to pieces in the city of london by henry the eighth's soldiers they shot in the streets all night that night a very young workman who was much more interested in his labour than in the battle was working in his stall it was the first stall from the entrance of london bridge a low door on the right the remains of some old red paint on the wall it might have been two o'clock in the morning. They were fighting all around there. The balls hissed across the Thames. Suddenly, someone knocked at the door of the stall, through which the workman's lamp threw a glimmer. The workman opened it. A man he did not know entered. This man carried in his arms a baby in long clothes, who was much frightened and was crying. The man put the child down on the table and said, Here is a creature who has neither father nor mother. Then he went out slowly and closed the door after him. Gilbert, the workman, had neither father nor mother himself. The workman accepted the child. The orphan adopted the orphan. He took it, watched over it, clothed it, fed it, tended it, brought it up, loved it. He gave himself entirely to this poor little creature whom civil war had thrown into his stall. He forgot everything for her, his youth, his love affairs, his pleasures. He made this child the sole object of his work, his affections, his life. And it has lasted sixteen years. Gilbert, 
the workman was you the child was jane all that you say is true but what are you driving at i forgot to say that on the child's swaddling clothes a paper was pinned on which was written have pity upon jane it was written in blood i have kept that paper i always carry it about me but you torture me what is your purpose tell me this you see that i am acquainted with your affairs gilbert watch over your house to-night what do you mean not another word don't go to your work stay around the house watch i am neither your friend nor your enemy this is only a piece of advice that i give you now for your own sake leave me go down that side and come back if you hear me call for help what does this mean goes off slowly scene five the man alone the matter is well arranged now i needed some one young and strong to help me if it was necessary this gilbert is just the man i want i think i hear the sound of oars and a guitar on the water yes he goes to the parapet a guitar and distant singing are heard when you sing soft at night long clasped in my arms so fond can you not hear the tender thoughts which to your voice respond your song brings back unto my heart the happy days of yore then sing my beauty sing my love sing on for evermore that is my man the voice draws nearer with each verse when you laugh on your lips dear love sweetest shadows play and doubt and cruel unbelief are sudden chased away for laughter proves we're loyal and faithful to the core then laugh my beauty laugh my love laugh on for evermore when you sleep calm and pure love in shadow neath my eyes and your soft breathing gives my heart its tenderest replies on your sweet form my eyes can feast o oh, beauty's priceless store then sleep my beauty sleep my love sleep on for evermore and when you say i love you in truth it seems to be as if god's heaven were opening especially for me i see dreams hidden in your eyes that we've not dreamed before then love me o oh my beauty love me for evermore you see the whole of life dear lies in those words just for all things that people envy all things that men adore all things that are seductive on which our hearts set store to sing to laugh my beauty to sleep to love no more he lands good he sends off the boatman excellent comes back to the front of the stage here he comes fabiano fabiani enters enveloped in a cloak he goes toward the door of the house scene six the man stopping fabiani a word with you if you please i believe someone is speaking to me who is this knave who are you whatever you wish me to be this lantern is not very bright but you wear a yellow cap it seems to me a jew's cap are you a jew yes a jew i have something to tell you what is your name i know your name and you don't know mine i have the advantage permit me to keep it you know my name that isn't true i know your name at naples you were called signor fabiani at madrid don fabiano at london you are called lord fabiano fabiani earl of clanbrassil the devil take you 
God keep you. Well, have you cuddled? I do not wish my name to be known when I go abroad by night. Especially when you go where you are going. What do you mean? If the Queen knew. I am going nowhere in particular. Oh, yes, my lord. You are going to see the fair Jane, the betrothed of Gilbert the Engraver. Fabiani, aside. The devil, this is a dangerous man. Shall I tell you more? You have seduced this girl, and during the last month she has received you twice in her house at night. This is the third time. The beauty is waiting for you. Keep still. Do you want hush money? How much do you want? We will see about that by and by. Now, my lord, shall I tell you why you have seduced this girl? By my faith, because I was in love with her. No, you were not in love with her. I wasn't in love with Jane. No more than with the Queen. Love? Oh, no. Calculation, yes. Why, fool, you are no man at all. You are my conscience dressed up like a Jew. I will speak to you as if I were your conscience. This is your plan. You are the Queen's favourite. The Queen has given you the garter, an earldom, and a lordship. Empty things, all of them. The garter is a rag. The earldom is a word. The lordship is the right to have your head cut off. You wanted something more. You wanted fine lands, fine bailiwicks, fine castles, fine revenues in fine English pounds. Well, King Henry VIII confiscated the estates of Lord Talbot, who was beheaded 16 years ago. You got Queen Mary to give you Lord Talbot's estates. But, to make the gift valid, it is necessary that Lord Talbot should have died without heirs. And, since Lord Talbot died for Queen Mary and for her mother, Catherine of Aragon, since Lord Talbot was a papist, and since the Queen is a papist, it is not at all doubtful, if there existed such an heir or an heiress, that Queen Mary would take back the estates from you, great favourite though you are, and out of duty, gratitude and religion, return them to the heir or heiress. You were quite easy on that score, for Lord Talbot had never had but one little daughter. She disappeared from her cradle at the time of her father's execution, and all England believed her to be dead. But your spies have lately discovered that during the night in which Lord Talbot and his partisans were exterminated by Henry the Eighth, a child was mysteriously brought to an engraver on London Bridge, and that it was probable that this child, reared under the name of Jane, was Jane Talbot, the little girl who had disappeared. It is true that the written proofs of her birth were lacking, but they might be found any day. The discovery was unpleasant. It would be hard to see oneself forced some day to give back Shrewsbury, Wexford, which is a fine city, and the magnificent earldom of Waterford, to a little girl. What was to be done? You searched for a way to set aside this young girl, and to destroy her. An honest man would have had her killed or poisoned. You, my lord, have done better. You have dishonoured her. Insolent fool. It is your conscience which is speaking, my lord. Another man would have taken this young girl's life. You have taken her honour, and, consequently, her future. Queen Mary is a prude, although she has lovers herself. This man goes to the bottom of everything. The Queen's health is bad. The Queen may die, and then you, her favourite, will fall shattered on her tomb. The actual proofs of this young girl's rank may be found, and then... If the Queen is dead, Jane Talbot, dishonoured though she be, will be recognised as Lord Talbot's heiress. You have foreseen that too. You are a handsome young cavalier. You have won her love. She has given herself to you. At the worst, you can marry her. Don't deprecate your scheme, my lord. I consider it sublime. If I were not myself, I would like to be you. Thank you. You have managed the matter very skilfully. You have concealed your name. You are safe as far as the Queen is concerned. 
the poor girl thinks she has been seduced by a nobleman from somerset county named amias paulet all he knows it all well come to the point what do you want of me my lord suppose some one had in his possession the papers which prove the birth existence and rights of talbot's heiress it would make you as poor as my ancestor job don fabiano and would leave you no better castles than your castles in spain which would be very hard for you yes but no one has those papers yes some one has them who i you miserable wretch it isn't true jew speaks jew lies i have got the papers you lie where have you got them in my pocket i don't believe you are they all in order nothing lacking nothing is lacking then i must have them gently jew give me those papers excellent jew miserable beggar who crawls through the streets give me the city of shrewsbury give me the city of wexford give me the earldom of waterford charity if you please those papers are everything to me and nothing to you simon renard and lord chandos would pay me pretty high for them simon renard and lord chandos are two dogs between whom i will have you hanged you have nothing else to say to me then farewell come back what do you want me to give you for those papers something which you have with you my purse out upon you do you want mine what then there is a parchment which never leaves you it is a signature in blank which the queen gave you and in which she swears upon her catholic crown to grant any favour he may ask to the one who presents it give me that signature in blank and you shall have jane talbot's titles paper for paper what do you want to do with this signature in blank i will explain cards on the table my lord i have told you your affairs now i will tell you mine i am one of the principal money-lenders in canterson street brussels i lend money it is my business i lend ten and get back fifteen i lend to everyone i would lend to the devil i would lend to the pope two months ago one of my creditors died without paying me it was an old exiled servant of the talbot family the poor man left nothing but a few rags i seized them among these rags i found a box and in the box some papers jane talbot's papers my lord giving her entire history in detail and furnishing proofs for better times the queen of england had just given you jane talbot's estates i was in great need of the queen of england at that time for i wanted to make a loan of ten thousand gold marks i realised that i might do business with you i came to england in this disguise i made myself a spy upon you upon jane talbot i did it all myself in this way i learned everything and here i am you shall have jane talbot's papers if you give me the queen's signature in blank i will write upon it that the queen shall give me ten thousand gold marks they owe me something at the excise office but i won't haggle ten thousand gold marks nothing more i don't ask you for the sum because only a crowned head could pay it i'm speaking frankly you see two men as clever as we are my lord have nothing to gain by deceiving each other if frankness were banished from the earth it would be rediscovered in a tete-a-tete -tete between two rogues impossible i can't give you the signature in blank ten thousand gold marks what would the queen say and then to-morrow i may be disgraced this signature in blank is my safeguard this signature in blank is my head what does that matter to me ask me for something else i want that do give me jane talbot's papers my lord give me the queen's signature in blank a cursed jew i will have to yield draws a paper from his pocket show me the queen's signature in blank show me talbot's papers afterward they go close to the lantern fabiani stands behind the jew and his left hand holds the paper under the jew's eyes he examines it the man reads we mary queen it is well you see my lord 
i am like you i have calculated upon everything i have foreseen everything fabiani draws a dagger with his right hand and plunges it into the jew's throat except this oh traitor help he falls in falling he throws a sealed packet into the darkness behind him fabiani does not perceive it fabiani leaning over the body faith i believe he is dead quick the papers he searches the jew what he has got them he has nothing nothing at all about him not a paper he was lying the old wretch he deceived me he wanted to rob me it is possible you accursed jew no he has nothing that is clear i have killed him for nothing ach they are all alike these jews to lie and steal that is all they can do come let us get rid of this corpse i can't leave it here at the door goes up stage i will see if the boatman is still there he can help me throw it into the thames he descends and disappears behind the parapet gilbert enters from the opposite side i thought i heard a cry he perceives the body stretched upon the ground under the lantern someone has been assassinated the beggar the man lifting himself halfway up ah uh, you come too late gilbert he points to the place where he threw the packet take them they are the papers which prove that jane your betrothed is daughter and heiress to the last lord talbot my assassin is lord clambrassil the queen's favourite oh i suffocate gilbert avenge me avenge yourself he dies dead avenge myself what does he mean jane daughter to lord talbot lord cambrassil the queen's favourite oh i am lost in wonder shaking the body speak one word more ah oh, he is indeed dead scene seven fabiani returning who goes there a man has been assassinated no a jew who killed him faith you or i sir no witnesses corpse on the ground two men beside it which is the assassin there is nothing to prove it is one rather than the other i rather than you miserable man you are the assassin well yes to be frank i am what of it i am going to call the constables you are going to help me throw the body into the water i will have you seized and punished you will help me throw the body into the water you are insolent do as i say let us destroy all traces of this believe me you are more interested in this matter than i am upon my soul one of us two did the deed i am a great lord a nobleman you are a passer-by a peasant a man of the people a noble who kills a jew pays a fine of four sous a man of the people who kills one of his fellow-creatures is hanged you would dare if you denounce me i will denounce you i will be believed sooner than you at any rate the chances are unequal four sous fine for me and gallows for you no witnesses no proofs oh my brain is bewildered this miserable man is right he has me in his power shall i help you throw the corpse into the river you are a demon gilbert takes the body by the head fabiani by the feet they carry it to the parapet yes faith my friend i can no longer exactly tell which of us killed this man they go down behind the parapet fabiani reappears it is done good night comrade go your way he starts toward the house but turns back seeing that gilbert follows him well what do you want money for your trouble in truth i don't owe you anything but here take this he gives his purse to gilbert whose first impulse is to refuse it but who accepts it afterward with the air of a man who has reflected well go what more are you waiting for nothing then stay if it pleases you you can have the fine starlight while i have the pretty girl god be with you he starts toward the door of the house and is about to open it where are you going faith into my house how into your house that is what i said which of us two is dreaming a short time ago you told me that i was the jew's assassin now you tell me that that house is yours 
or that of my mistress, which amounts to the same thing. Repeat what you have just said. My friend, I say, since you wish to know, that this house belongs to a beautiful girl named Jane, who is my mistress. And I tell you, my lord, that you lie. I tell you that you are a liar and an assassin. I tell you that you are an insolent knave. I tell you you have pronounced some fatal words which will kill us both. You for having said them. Me for having heard them. Dear me, who the devil is this man? I am Gilbert the engraver. Jane is my betrothed. And I am the Chevalier Amias Paulette. Jane is my mistress. You lie, I tell you. You are Lord Canbrassel, the Queen's favorite. Don't you think I know that, fool? Fabiani, aside. Everybody seems to know me tonight. Another dangerous man whom we must get rid of. Tell me instantly that you have lied like a coward, and that Jane is not your mistress. Do you know her writing? He takes a note from his pocket. Read this. Aside while Gilbert tremblingly unfolds the paper. He would go in and quarrel with Jane. It would give my people time to get here. Gilbert, reading. I will be alone tonight. You can come. Malediction! My lord, you have dishonored my betrothed. You are an infamous wretch. I demand my revenge. Fabiani, putting his hand to his sword. Willingly. Where is your sword? Oh, fury, to be one of the people, to have nothing, neither sword nor dagger. Well, you can go, but I will wait for you at night in a corner of the street, and I will stick my nails into your throat, and I will assassinate you, you villain. Dear me, how violent you are, my friend. I will be revenged upon you, my lord. You? Revenged upon me? You so low, upon me so high? You are crazy. I defy you. You defy me? Yes. You shall see. Fabiani, aside. Tomorrow's sun must not rise for this man. Aloud. Friend, listen to me. Go into your house. I'm sorry you found it out, but I leave the beauty to you. Go in. He throws a key down at Gilbert's feet. There is a key if you haven't got one. Or, if you like it better, you can knock against the shutter three times, and Jane will think it is I and let you in. Good night. He goes off. Scene 8 Gilbert alone he is gone he is no longer here i did not grind and crush him beneath my feet i had to let him go not a weapon about me he sees on the ground the dagger with which lord clanbrassil killed the jew he picks it up with fearful haste ah you come too late you can probably kill no one but myself all the same whether you fall from heaven or are vomited up from hell i bless you my jane has betrayed me. Jane has given herself to this infamous man. Jane is the heiress of Lord Talbot. Jane is lost to me. Oh, God, more terrible things have come to me in this hour than my brain can stand. Simon Renard appears in the darkness at the back. Oh, to be revenged on that man, to be revenged on this Lord Cambressil. If I go to the Queen's palace, the lackeys will kick me out as if I were a dog. I am mad. My head will burst. I am willing to die, but I want to be revenged. I would give my blood for revenge. Will nobody in the world make this bargain with me? Who will give me vengeance on Lord Cambrassel and take my life in payment? Scene 9 Simon Renard, taking a step forward. I will. You? Who are you? The man you want. Do you know who I am? You are the man I need. There is no longer but one thought in my mind. Do you know that? To be revenged on Lord Cambrassil, and to die. You shall be revenged on Lord Clanbrassil, and you shall die. Whoever you may be, I thank you. Yes, you shall have the vengeance you desire, but do not forget upon what condition I must have your life take it it is agreed yes follow me where you shall know remember that you have promised to avenge me remember that you have promised to die end of first day
Second day of Mary Tudor by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Second day. The Queen. Scene. A room in the royal apartment. The gospel open on a prediu the royal crown upon a stool side doors a large door in the centre a portion of the background concealed by a large tapestry representing a grand tournament scene one the queen splendidly dressed reclining upon a couch fabiano fabiani seated on a folding chair magnificent costume the garter fabiani a guitar in his hands singing when you sleep calm and pure love in shadow neath my eyes and your soft breathing gives my heart its tenderest replies on your sweet form my eyes can feast all oh, beauty's priceless store let sleep my beauty sleep my love sleep on forevermore and when you say i love you in truth it seems to be as if god's heaven were opening especially for me i see dreams hidden in your eyes that we've not dreamed before then love me oh my beauty love me forevermore you see the whole of life dear lies in those words just for all things that people envy all things that men adore all things that are seductive on which our hearts set store to sing to laugh my beauty to sleep to love no more he puts down his guitar oh i love you more than i can tell madam but this simon renard the simon renard who is more powerful here than yourself i hate him i can't help it my lord you know that he is here as the ambassador of the prince of spain my future husband your future husband come my lord let us not speak of that i love you what more do you wish moreover it is time for you to go now one moment mary it is time for the secret council to meet until now there is only a woman here we must let the queen enter i wish the woman would keep the queen waiting at the door you wish do you you wish do you look at me my lord fabiani you have a young and beautiful head it is you who are beautiful madam you need only your beauty to be all-powerful there is something on your head which tells me you are the queen but it is written plainer on your brow than on your crown flatterer i love you you love me do you not you love only me say it to me again just like that with the same eyes alas we poor woman we never know just what is passing in a man's heart we have to trust your eyes and the handsomest eyes fabiani are often the most false but yours my lord are so full of loyalty so full of candour so full of good faith they could not deceive those eyes could they yes my beautiful page your glances are artless and sincere oh it would be shameful to take such heavenly eyes to betray with your eyes are the eyes either of a devil or an angel neither angel nor devil a man who loves you who loves the queen who loves mary listen to me fabiani i love you too you are young there are many beautiful women who smile tenderly on you i know it people get tired of queens as well as of other women don't interrupt me if you ever fall in love with another woman i want you to tell me about it don't interrupt me dear i may forgive you if you tell me about it you don't know how much i love you i don't know myself it is true there are moments when i would rather see you dead than happy with another but there are also moments when i would rather have you happy 
indeed i don't know why they try to make me out such a wicked woman i can only be happy with you mary i love no one but you are you sure look at me are you sure oh i am jealous sometimes i imagine where is the woman who does not think of these things sometimes i imagine that you are false to me i would like to be invisible so that i might follow you and always know what you are doing what you are saying where you are in fairy stories they tell about a ring which makes one invisible i would give my crown to have such a ring as that i keep thinking that you go to see beautiful women in the city oh you must not deceive me indeed you must not banish such thoughts from your mind madam i false to you my love my queen my kind mistress to do that i would have to be the most thankless the most miserable of men and i have given you no reason to think me the most thankless the most miserable of men i love you mary i adore you i could not even look at another woman i love you i say but don't you see it in my eyes there must be some way to persuade you look at me well do i look like a man who is false when a man deceives a woman you can see it at once women are seldom mistaken about that and what a time you choose to tell me these things the one moment in my life when i love you the most it is true i am sure i never loved you so much as i do to-day i am not speaking to the queen what do i care about the queen what can she do to me she can have my head cut off what does that amount to you mary can break my heart it isn't your sovereignty that i love it is yourself it is your beautiful white and soft hand that i love to kiss it isn't your sceptre madam thank you my fabiano good-bye ah my lord how young you are what beautiful black hair what a graceful head you have come back to me in an hour what do you call an hour i call a century he goes out as soon as he is gone the queen rises hastily goes to a concealed door opens it and ushers in simon renard scene two come in sir bailiff well did you stay there did you hear him yes madame what do you say to it oh of all the men on earth he is the most false the most deceitful what do you say to it i say madame that it is plain to be seen his name ends in i are you sure that he goes to this woman at night did you see him i myself chandos clinton montague ten witnesses oh it is indeed infamous the whole affair will be still better proved to the queen in a short time the young woman is here as i told your majesty i had her brought from her house last night isn't this a sufficient crime for his execution sir what to go to see a pretty girl by night oh no madame your majesty had frogmorton tried for a similar crime frogmorton was acquitted i punished frogmorton's judges try not to have to punish fabiani's judges how shall i revenge myself on this traitor your majesty wants only a certain kind of revenge the only kind worthy of me frogmorton was acquitted madame there is only one way i have explained it to your majesty the man who is there will he do whatever i wish if you do all that he wishes will he give his life he will make his own conditions but he will give his life what does he want do you know what do you yourself want revenge bid him come in but stay you out there within call sir bailiff madame tell my lord chandos to hold himself in the next room with six men of my ordinance in readiness to appear and the woman also let her be ready to appear go simon renard goes out oh it would be frightful the queen alone a side door opens simon renard and gilbert enter scene three before whom do i stand before the queen the queen yes the queen i am the queen there is no time for astonishment you sir are gilbert a workman an engraver you live somewhere beyond the borders of the river with a woman named jane who is your betrothed 
and who deceives you whose lover is a man named fabiano who deceives me you want revenge so do i in order to get it i must be able to make any disposition i please of your life it is necessary that you should say what i command you to say no matter what it is for you there must be no longer either false or true good or bad justice or injustice nothing but my vengeance and my will i shall require you to let me act and to let yourself be acted upon do you consent madam you shall have your revenge but i warn you it will cost you your life that is all make your conditions if you have an old mother and want her tablecloth covered with ingots of gold speak i will do it sell me your life as dear as you please i am no longer willing to die madam what i have been thinking about it all night nothing is proved yet i saw a man who boasted that he was jane's lover how do i know that he did not lie i saw a key how do i know that he did not steal it i saw a letter how do i know that she was not forced to write it i don't even know whether it was her writing it was dark i was excited i could not see i can't give up my life which is her life like that i don't believe any of it i am not sure of any of it i have not seen jane it is easy to see that you love you are like me you refuse all the proofs but if you see her your jane if you hear her confess the crime will you do what i wish yes upon one condition tell it to me afterward to simon renard bring this woman here at once simon renard goes out the queen places gilbert behind a curtain which covers part of the background of the apartment stand there jane enters pale and trembling scene four gilbert behind the curtain approach young woman you know who we are yes madame you know who is the man who seduced you yes madame he deceived you he passed himself off for a nobleman called amias paulet yes madame you know now that it is fabiano fabiani earl of clanbritil yes madame last night when they seized you in your house you had given him a rendezvous you were waiting for him jane wringing her hands heavens madame answer jane with a feeble voice yes you understand that there is no more hope neither for him nor for you nothing but death that is a hope tell me all about it where did you meet this man first the first time i saw him was but what is the use a poor wretched girl of the people frivolous and vain in love with jewels and fine clothes a girl dazzled by the handsome looks of a great lord that is all i am seduced i am dishonoured i am lost there is nothing to add to that my god madame don't you see that each word i speak is killing me enough your anger is terrible i know it madame my head bends now beneath the punishment you have prepared for me punishment for you do you think i concern myself about you simpleton who are you wretched creature that a queen should concern herself about you oh no fabiano is my affair as for you madame some one else will look out for your punishment well madame whoever that one may be whatever the punishment i will endure all without a murmur i will even thank you if you will listen to one prayer i am about to make there is a man who took me in an orphan from my birth who adopted me brought me up nourished me loved me and who loves me still a man of whom i am most unworthy toward whom i have been most guilty and yet whose image lies at the bottom of my heart beloved revered sacred as is that of god a man who now while i am speaking to you finds his home empty deserted robbed who can't understand it and who rends his garments in anguish well madame what i ask of your majesty is that he may never understand that i may disappear without his knowing what has become of me what i have done or what you have done with me alas kind heaven i do not know how to make you understand but you ought to feel that i have a friend in him a noble generous friend poor gilbert yes it is true he respects me and believes me pure and i do not want him to hate me and despise me oh you understand me don't you madam that man's respect is a great deal more to me than my life and then it will make him suffer so much 
such a surprise he won't believe it at first no he will not believe it my god poor gilbert oh madam have pity on him and on me he has done you no harm in the name of heaven keep him from knowing the awful truth in the name of heaven don't let him know that i am guilty he will kill himself don't let him know that i am dead he will die too the man you are speaking of is here he is listening to you he will judge you he will punish you gilbert appears heavens gilbert gilbert to the queen my life belongs to you madam good have you any conditions to make yes madam what are they we give you a royal word that we will grant them this madam it is very simple it is a debt of gratitude i pay to one of your noble lords who employed me a great deal in my capacity as engraver speak this lord has a secret liaison with a woman whom he cannot marry because she belongs to a proscribed family this woman who up to the present time has lived in concealment is the only daughter and heiress of the last lord talbot beheaded under king henry the eighth what are you sure of what you are saying you say john talbot the good catholic lord the loyal defender of my mother of aragon has left a daughter upon my crown if that is true this child is my daughter and what john talbot did for the mother of mary of england mary of england will do for the daughter of john talbot then of course it will be a pleasure to your majesty to give back lord talbot's estates to his daughter yes truly and to take them away from fabiano but are there proofs that this heiress exists there are and if there are not we will make them we are not a queen for nothing your majesty will give back to lord talbot's daughter the estates lands rank coat of arms and the device of her father your majesty will remove her from all proscription and will guarantee that her life shall be safe your majesty will marry her to this lord who is the only man she could marry upon these conditions madam you can dispose of me of my liberty of my life and of my will as you see fit good i will do what you have asked your majesty will do what i have asked the queen of england swears it to me gilbert the engraver upon her crown which is here and upon the open gospel which is there upon the royal crown which is here and the divine gospel which is there i swear it the compact is concluded madam have a tomb prepared for me and a nuptial bed prepared for the lovers the lord i speak of is fabiani earl of clambrassel talbot's heiress behold her what does he say am i dealing with a fool what do you mean have a care sir you are bold to mock the queen of england in the royal chambers people should look to their words there are times when the lips bring the head to the block you have my head madam i have your oath you do not mean to say you are speaking seriously this fabiano this jane come come this jane is the daughter and heiress of lord talbot bah nonsense delusion fancy have you got the proofs complete he takes a packet from his breast read these papers have i time to read your papers did i ask for your papers what are your papers matter to me if they prove anything upon my soul i will throw them into the fire and nothing will be left of them nothing but your oath madam my oath my oath upon the crown and upon the gospel madam that is to say on your head and your soul on your life in this world and on your life in the next but what do you want oh i swear you are mad what do i want jane has lost her rank give it back to her jane has lost her honour give it back to her proclaim her the daughter of lord talbot and the wife of lord cambrassel and then take my life your life what do you want me to do with your life then i didn't want it except to use for vengeance on this man this fabiano you can't understand anything at all can you well i can't understand you either you talked about vengeance this is the way you avenge yourself is it these men of the people are stupid and after all do you suppose i believe your ridiculous story about an heiress of talbot the papers you show me papers i won't look at them oh 
a woman wrongs you and you played her magnanimous well do it if it suits you i am not magnanimous no my heart is full of rage and hate i will avenge myself and you shall help me oh but this man is mad 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 my god why do i need him it is exasperating to have to deal with people like this at such a serious time i have your word as catholic queen lord canbrassel has seduced jane he shall marry her and if he refuses to marry her you will force him to do it oh no have pity on me gilbert well then if this infamous wretch refuses your majesty can do what she pleases with him and with me the queen with joy ah that is all i ask in that case i will do everything the queen commands provided the crown of the countess of waterford is solemnly replaced by the queen on the sacred and inviolable head of jane who stands here everything everything even a crime if it is a crime you want i will not stop at treachery which is more than a crime nor at infamy which is more than treachery you will say what i want you to say you will die the death that i want you to die the death that you want me to die oh my god you swear it i swear it then it is settled it is enough i have your word you have mine it is agreed she seems to reflect a moment to jane you are not needed here go out i will send for you oh gilbert what is this you have done oh gilbert i am a wretched creature and i don't dare raise my eyes to you oh gilbert you are more than an angel for you have the virtues of an angel and a man's passions at the same time she goes out scene five the queen to gilbert have you a weapon about you a knife a dagger anything gilbert drawing from his breast lord clanbrassel's dagger a dagger yes madam good hold it in your hand she seizes his arm quickly sir bailiff de mont lord chandos enter simon renard lord chandos and guards seize this man he has threatened my life with his dagger i seized his arm as he was about to strike me he is an assassin madam the queen low to gilbert have you forgotten your agreement so soon is this the way you let me use you aloud you are all witnesses that he had a dagger in his hand sir bailiff what is the name of the executioner of the tower of london he is an irishman called macdermot send for him i want to speak to him yourself myself the queen will speak to the executioner yes the queen will speak to the executioner the head will speak to the hand send for him a guard goes out my lord chandos and you gentlemen will answer to me for this man keep him there among you back of you certain things are about to happen here which he must witness sir lieutenant damont is lord clambrassel in the palace he is there in the painted chamber awaiting the queen's good pleasure to see him does he suspect anything nothing the queen to lord chandos let him come in the entire court is also waiting there will nobody be admitted before lord clanbrassel who are those among our nobles who hate fabiani all which hate him the most clinton montague somerset earl of derby gerald fitzgerald lord paget and the lord chancellor the queen to lord chandos admit him all except the lord chancellor go chandos goes out to simon renard the worthy bishop chancellor is not any fonder of fabiani than the rest but he is a more scrupulous man noticing the papers which gilbert left upon the table ah i must look over these papers while she is examining them the door in the background opens those lords designated by the queen enter making profound salutations scene six good day gentlemen god be with you my lords to lord montague anthony brown i do not forget that you held your own most worthily against john of montmorency and the count of toulouse during my negotiations with my uncle the emperor lord paget to-day you will receive your letters patent of baron paget de bodesert in stafford and this is our old friend lord clinton 
we are always your good friend my lord it was you who exterminated thomas wyatt in st james field let us all remember it my lords the crown of england was saved that day by a bridge which enabled my troops to reach the rebels and by a wall which prevented the rebels from reaching me the bridge was london bridge the wall was my lord clinton lord clinton lo to simon renard the queen has not spoken to me for six months how kind she is to-day simon renard lo to lord clinton patience my lord she will be kinder still by and by the queen to lord chandos my lord clambrassil may enter to simon renard after he has been here a few moments she speaks to him in a low voice and indicates the door through which jane passed i understand madame fabiani enters scene seven ah here he is she continues to speak to simon renard in a low voice fabiani everybody salutes him he looks round him aside what does this mean there are only my enemies here this morning the queen is speaking in a low tone to simon renard the devil she is laughing it is a bad sign the queen graciously to fabiani god be with you my lord fabiani seizing her hand which he kisses madam aside she smiled at me the danger is not for me the queen still graciously i want to speak to you she advances to the front of the stage with him and i also i want to speak to you madam i have right to reproach you to keep me away to exile me so long ah it wouldn't be thus if you thought of me during those hours of absence as i think of you you are unjust since you left me i have thought of no one but you is that really true does so much happiness belong to me say it to me again the queen always smiling i swear it to you then you do indeed love me as i love you yes my lord truly i have thought of no one but you so much so that i have tried to plan a pleasant surprise for your return what do you mean what surprise a meeting which will give you pleasure a meeting with whom guess can't you guess no madam turn around he turns and sees jane on the threshold of the little door which is half open fabiani aside jane jane aside it is he the queen with the same smile my lord do you know this young woman no madam young woman do you know this lord truth before life yes madam so my lord you do not know this woman madam this is a conspiracy i am surrounded by enemies this woman is doubtless in league with them i do not know her madam i do not even know who she is madam the queen rising and striking him in face with her glove ah you are a coward you betray one and disown the other you don't even know who she is do you want me to tell you this woman is jane talbot daughter of john talbot the good catholic lord who perished in the scaffold for my mother this woman is jane talbot my cousin jane talbot countess of shrewsbury countess of wexford countess of waterford peeress of england that is who she is this woman lord Paget, you are commissioner of the private seal you will remember our words the queen of england solemnly recognizes this woman here present as jane daughter and sole heiress of the last earl of waterford showing the papers here are the titles and the proofs which you will have sealed with the great seal it is our will to fabiani yes countess of waterford and it is proved and you will give back her estates you wretched man ah you don't know this woman you don't know who she is well i am telling you it is jane talbot shall i tell you more yet looking him in the face in a low voice between her teeth coward she's your mistress madam that is what she is now this is what you are you are a man without soul a man without heart a man without brains you're a liar and a villain you are by my faith gentlemen you need not draw away i am quite willing you should hear what i have to say to this man i am not lowering my voice it seems to me fabiano you are a wretch a traitor to me a coward to her 
a lying lackey, the most vile, the lowest of all men. Yet it is true. I made you Earl of Clambrassel, Baron of Dinasmonde, and what more? Baron of Dartmouth in Devonshire. Ah, well, I was an idiot. My lords, I ask you pardon for having forced you to be elbowed by that man there. You, a knight! You, a noble! You, a lord! Compare yourself a little with those who are such. Look! Look around you! There stand noblemen. There is Bridges, Baron Chandos. There is Seymour, Duke of Somerset. There are Stanleys, who have been Earls of Derby since 1485. There are the Clintons, who have been barons since 1298. Do you imagine you are like these people? You! You say that you are allied to the Spanish family of Penalver, but it is not true. You are only a bad Italian. Nothing, worse than nothing, son of a shoemaker in the village of Larino. Yes, gentlemen, the son of a shoemaker. I knew it, and I did not tell it. I concealed it, and I made believe I credited this man when he talked about his nobility. That is the way we are, we women. Oh, heaven! I wish there were women here. It would be a lesson to them all. This scoundrel, this scoundrel, who betrays one woman and disowns the other. Infamous creature! Oh, yes, you are indeed infamous. What? I have been speaking all this time, and he is not yet on his knees. On your knees, Fabiani. My lords, force this man to kneel. Your Majesty. This creature whom I have loaded with benefits, this Neapolitan lackey, whom I have made a noble knight and a proud earl of England. Ah, I ought to have expected this. But I am always like that. I am obstinate, and afterward I see that I am wrong. It is my fault. Italian stands for liar, Neapolitan for coward. Every time that my father made use of an Italian, he repented of it. This Fabiani, you see Lady Jane, unfortunate child, to what a man you have surrendered yourself. But I will avenge you. Oh, I ought to have known it from the first. You will find nothing in an Italian's pocket but a stiletto, nothing in his soul but treachery. Madam, I swear to you. Good. Now he will perjure himself. He will descend to the depths of infamy. He will make us blush to our fingertips before these men. We women who have loved him. He will not even lift up his head. Yes, madam, I will lift it up. I am lost, I see it clearly. My death is decided. You will make use of every means. Dagger. Poison. The Queen, taking hold of both his hands and dragging him violently to the front of the stage. Poison! Dagger! What are you saying, Italian? A treacherous vengeance, a disgraceful vengeance. A vengeance from the back, a vengeance such as you take in your country. No, Signor Fabiani, neither dagger nor poison. Do I have to conceal myself? Do I have to hide in the corners of the street at night and make myself small when I want a revenge? No, by my faith, I want the daylight. Do you hear, my lord? The full noonday, the bright sun, the public square, the axe and stake, the crowds in the street, the crowds at the windows, the crowds on the roofs. A hundred thousand witnesses. I want people to be afraid. Do you hear, my lord? I want them to think it splendid, frightful, magnificent. I want them to say, it is a woman who has been wronged, but it is a queen who takes revenge. This much-envied favourite, this handsome, insolent young man, whom I have dressed in velvets and satins, I want to see him bent double, terrified and trembling, on his knees before a black cloth, with naked feet, with manacled wrists, hissed by the people, fingered by the executioner. On this white neck, where I have put a golden colour, I want to put a rope. I have seen how Fabiani looks upon a throne, I want to see how he looks upon a scaffold. Madam... Not a word, not a word. You are indeed lost, as you say. You will mount the scaffold, as did Suffolk and Northumberland. This will be a festival, such as I have given before to my good city of London. You know how she hates you, this good city of mine. Faith, when one wants vengeance, is a good thing to be married, Queen of England, daughter of Henry the Eighth, and mistress of four seas. When you are on the scaffold, you can make a long speech to the people, if you like, as Northumberland did, or a long prayer to God, as Suffolk did, in order to give pardon the time to arrive. But God is my witness that you are a traitor, and the pardon will not come. This wretched liar who talked of love to me, and this morning even said thou to me. Eh, gentlemen, it seems to amaze you that I talk thus openly before you. But I repeat it, 
what do i care the lord somerset my lord duke you are constable of the tower demand this man's sword here it is but i protest admitting that it is proved that i deceived or seduced a woman what does it matter to me whether you have seduced a woman do i concern myself about that these gentlemen are witnesses it is a matter of indifference to me the seduction of a woman is not a capital offence madam your majesty could not procure frogmorton's condemnation upon the same accusation i believe he defies us now the worm has become a serpent who says you are accused of that of what else am i accused i am not an englishman i am no subject to your majesty i am a subject of the king of naples and a vassal of the holy father i will appeal to his ambassador the eminent cardinal polis to save me i will defend myself madam i am a stranger i cannot be tried unless i have committed a crime a real crime what is my crime you ask what your crime is yes madam you all hear this question that he asked my lords you shall hear the answer listen and look out for yourself all of you however great you may be because you will see that i need only stamp upon the earth with my foot to bring from out of it a scaffold chandos open that folding door call the court every one bid every one enter the door at the back is opened the entire court enters scene eight enter enter my lords i am truly pleased to see you to-day good good the officers of the law this way nearer nearer where are the sergeants at arms of the house of lords harriet and herbert ah there you are gentlemen be welcome draw your swords good place yourself at the right and the left of that man he is your prisoner madam what is my crime my lord gardiner my learned friend you are chancellor of england we order you and the twelve lord commissioners of the star chamber whom we regret not to see here to assemble yourself in haste strange things are passing in this palace listen my lords madame elizabeth has raised more than one enemy to our crown we have had the pietro caro plot that man who started the exeter movement and who communicated with madame elizabeth by means of a cipher cut on her guitar we have had the treachery of thomas wyatt who roused the country of kent we have had the rebellion of the duke of suffolk who was captured in the hollow of a tree after his followers were defeated to-day we have a new attempt listen all of you to-day this morning a man presented himself at my audience after a few words he drew his dagger on me i stopped his hand in time lord chandos and the bailiff damont seized the man he says that he was urged to the crime by lord clambrassel by me it is not true this is a frightful thing this man does not exist this man cannot be found who is he where is he he is here gilbert coming out from among the soldiers behind whom he was hidden up to this time i am the man according to this man's declarations we marry queen accused before the star chamber this other man fabiano fabiani earl of clambrassel of high treason and of an attempt of regicide upon our imperial and sacred person regicide i oh, this is monstrous oh my brain is bewildered i cannot see clear what is this trap whoever you may be wretched creature dare you affirm that what the queen says is true yes i urged you to regicide yes yes always yes malediction oh it is impossible for you to know how false that is gentlemen that man comes from hell unfortunate wretch you want to ruin me but don't you see that you will ruin yourself in the same breath the crime you charge upon me falls upon you too you will send me to the block but you will die also madman with a single word you cause two heads to fall did you know that i know it my lords this man is bribed by you here is the purse full of gold which you paid me for the crime your crest and your monogram are embroidered upon it just heaven but you don't show me the dagger with which this man it is said attempted to strike the queen where is the dagger here it is gilbert to fabiani it is yours you gave it to me for that purpose they will find the sheath at your house earl of clombrison what reply do you make do you recognize this man no in truth he only saw me by night 
Let me whisper two words to him, madam. They will help his memory. He approaches Fabiani. My lord, you appear to recognize no one today, neither the man you have wronged, nor the woman you have seduced. Ah, the queen revenges herself. But the man of the people, he avenges himself also. You defied me to do it, I think. Behold yourself caught between a double vengeance, my lord. What do you say to that? I am Gilbert the Engraver. Yes, I recognize you. My lords, I recognize this man. Since it is with him I have to deal, I have nothing more to say. He confesses. The Lord Chancellor to Gilbert. According to Norman law and statute twenty five, Henry the Eighth, in a case of high treason of the first degree, a confession does not save the accomplice. Do not forget, it is a case wherein the queen has not the right of mercy, and you will die upon the scaffold as well as the man you accuse. Therefore, reflect. Do you confirm all you have said? I know that I shall die, and I confirm it jean aside my god if this is a dream it is very horrible the lord chancellor to gilbert are you willing to repeat your statements with your hand upon the gospel he presents the gospel to gilbert who puts his hand upon it with my hand upon the gospel and my approaching death before my eyes i swear that this man is an assassin that this dagger which is his was used for the crime that this purse, which is his, was given to me in payment for the crime. May God help me. It is the truth. The Lord Chancellor to Fabiani. My lord, what have you to say? Nothing. I am lost. Simon Renard. Do to the Queen. Your Majesty sent for the executioner. He is there. Good. Let him come in. The row of noblemen divides, and the executioner appears. He is dressed in red and black, and on his shoulder bears a long sword in its cabard. Scene 9 My lord Duke of Somerset, these two men to the tower. My lord Gardiner, arch-chancellor, let their trial before the twelve peers of the Star Chamber commence to-morrow, and may God keep watch over England we expect them to be judged both of them before we leave for exford where we are to open parliament and for windsor where we are to spend easter to the executioner approach i am glad to see you you are a faithful servant you are old you have already witnessed three reigns it is customary for the sovereign of this kingdom to make you as costly a gift as possible upon their ascension my father henry the eighth gave you the diamond clasp of his cloak my brother, Edward the Sixth, gave you a goblet of chasset gold. It is my turn now. I have not given you anything yet. I must give you a present. Come nearer. Indicating Fabiani. Do you see that head? That young, adorable head? That head, which up to this morning was the dearest, the most precious thing to me in all my kingdom? Well, that head. Look at it well. I give it to you. End of second day. Third day, part one of Mary Tudor by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Third day, part one. Which of the two? Scene. Hall in the interior of the Tower of London. Pointed arch upheld by large pillars. To the right and to the left, two low doors to two cells. To the right, a dormer window, which is supposed to overlook the Thames. To the left, a dormer window, which is supposed to overlook the streets. On each side, a door concealed in the wall. In the background, a gallery with a sort of balcony shut in by glass and overlooking the exterior courts of the tower scene one well alas no more hope no more hope gilbert goes to the window you won't see anything from the window you inquired didn't you i'm only too sure it is for fabiani 
It is for Fabiani. How fortunate that man is. Maledictions on me. Poor Gilbert. Your turn will come. Today it is he. Tomorrow it will be you. What do you say? We are not thinking of the same thing. What are you talking about? About the scaffold which they are building. And I, I am speaking of Jane. Of Jane? Yes, of Jane. Only of Jane. What does the rest matter to me? You have forgotten, have you? You don't remember that for one whole month, glued to the bars of my cell, from which I can look into the street, I have watched her, pale and sad, wandering around the base of this tower, which holds two men, Fabiani and me. You have forgotten all about my anguish, have you? And my doubts, my misgivings? For which of us does she come? Poor wretch, I ask myself this question day and night. I asked you, Joshua, and last night you promised to try to see her, and speak to her. Oh, tell me, did you learn anything? Is it from me she comes, or is it for Fabiani? I learned that Fabiani is certainly to be beheaded today, and you tomorrow. And from that moment I confess I lost my head, Gilbert. The scaffold drove Jane entirely out of my thoughts. Your death... My death? What do you mean by that word? My death is that Jane loves me no longer. From the day that I was no longer beloved, I was dead. Oh, yes, truly dead. Joshua, what has remained of me since that time can't be worth taking tomorrow. Oh, Joshua, don't you know? You can't understand what a man is when he loves. If anyone had said to me two months ago, Jane, your Jane without reproach, your Jane so pure, your love, your pride, your lily, your treasure, Jane will give herself to another? Will you take her then? I should have said, no, I will not have her. Rather death a thousand times for her and for myself. And I should have crushed under my feet anyone who would dare to speak to me like that. If I would take her? Today, you know, Jane is no longer the Jane without stain whom I adored, the Jane whose brow I hardly dared touch with my lips. Jane has given herself to another, to a wretch. I know it. And, well, it's all the same to me. I love her. My heart is broken. But I love her. I would kiss the hem of her dress, and I would ask her pardon if she would only take me. She might be in the gutter with those who belong there. And I would take her out, and I would hold her close to my heart. Joshua, Joshua, I would give not a hundred years of life, since I no longer possess one day but the eternity which will be mine to-morrow, just to see her smile at me once more, just once more before my death, and to have her say to me those dear words she used to say, I love you. Joshua, Joshua, that is the way a man's heart is when he loves. You think you would kill the woman who betrays you? No, you wouldn't kill her. You would lie at her feet afterwards, the same as before, only you would be sad. You think I am weak? What should I have gained in killing Jane? Oh, my heart will burst with all these unbearable thoughts. If she only loved me now, what would it matter to me what she has done? But she loves Fabiani. But she loves Fabiani. It is for Fabiani that she comes here. There is only one thing that is sure. It is that I want to die. Have pity on me, Joshua. Fabiani will die today. And I tomorrow. God is above all. I will be revenged on him today. Tomorrow he will be revenged on me. My brother, here is the second constable of the tower, Master Aeneas Delverton. You must go in. I will see you again tonight. Oh, to die without being beloved. To have no one to weep for us. Jane! 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 Re-enters his cell. Poor Gilbert! Good God! Who could have foretold that what has happened would happen? Goes out. Enter Simon Renard and Master Aeneas. Scene 2 As you say, it is very extraordinary. But what can you expect? The Queen is crazy. She doesn't know what she wants. You can't count upon anything. She is a woman. I would like to know what she is here for. Well, a woman's heart is a riddle of which King Francis I wrote the solution on that pane of glass at Chambord. 
a woman's heart is most capricious who trusts her finds life not propitious listen to me master aeneas we are old friends we must get through this thing to-day everything here depends upon you if you are ordered be slow about it let it fall through skilfully let me have two clean hours before me to-night and what i want will be accomplished to-morrow there will be no favourite i shall be all-powerful and you will be baronet and lieutenant of the tower the day after do you understand i understand very well oh, someone is coming we must not be seen together go out that way i am going to meet the queen they separate scene three a jailer enters with caution then ushers in lady jane you are where you wish to be my lady here are the doors to the two cells my recompense now if you please jane unfastens a diamond bracelet and gives it to him there it is thanks don't compromise me he goes out jane alone kind heaven what shall i do it is i who have destroyed him i must be the one to save him i can never do it never a woman can do nothing the scaffold the scaffold oh it is horrible come no more tears let us have action i never can do it i never can do it have mercy on me my god i think some one is coming whose voice is that i recognize it it is the queen's voice ah all is lost she hides behind a pillar the queen and simon renard enter scene four ah the change surprises you i am no longer myself well what does that matter to me it is the truth i don't want him to die now yet yesterday your majesty ordered the execution to take place to-day as i ordered the day before that the execution should take place yesterday as i ordered some day that the execution should take place monday to-day i ordered the execution to take place to-morrow as a matter of fact since the second sunday in advent when the decision was pronounced in the star chamber and the two criminals came back to the tower preceded by the executioner with the axe turned toward them and that was three weeks ago every day since then your majesty has put the matter off until to-morrow well can't you understand what that means sir must i explain everything and must a woman be forced to show her naked heart to you because she is a queen unfortunate woman that she is and because you represent the prince of spain her future husband you don't understand you men that with a woman the heart has its chastity as well as the body well then yes since you want to know since you make believe that you don't understand anything yes every day i put off fabiani's execution until to-morrow because every morning my courage fails me when i think that the bell of the tower of london will ring out his death knell because to think that they are sharpening an axe for that man breaks my heart because it kills me to think they will nail a coffin over him because i am a woman because i am weak because i am insane because i love him yet my god there have you got enough are you satisfied do you understand now oh some day my lord i will have my revenge on you for all these things you have made me tell you yet it ought to be about time to get through with this fabiani you expect to marry a royal master the prince of spain madame if the prince of spain is not satisfied let him say so we will marry somebody else suitors are not lacking the son of the king of the romans the prince of piedmont the infante of portugal cardinal paulus the king of denmark and lord courtenay are as good noblemen as he lord courtenay lord courtenay an english baron is worth a spanish prince my lord besides lord courtenay is descended from the emperors of the east oh get mad if you like fabiani has made himself hated by every one in london who has got a heart except by me peasants and lords are united against him and if he is not executed this very day as your majesty has promised well there will be an uprising among the people i've got my lance quinets 
there will be a conspiracy among the nobles i have the executioner your majesty swore upon your mother's prayer-book that you would not pardon him here is a signature in blank which he has sent to me in which i swear on my imperial crown that i will pardon him my father's crown is worth as much as my mother's prayer-book one oath destroys the other but who says that i will pardon him he has boldly betrayed you madame what does that matter all men are alike about that i don't want him to die listen my lord i mean sir bailiff good god you confuse my mind so much that i can't even tell whom i am talking to oh i know all that you want to say to me i know he is a vile degraded contemptible man i know it as well as you and i blush for it but i love him what do you want me to do about it i would probably love a better man less moreover who are you all of you great as you may be are you any better than he you will tell me that he is a favourite and the english nation detests favourites don't i know that you only want to overthrow him to put the earl of kildare that fool that irishman in his place that he may have twenty heads a day cut off what does that matter to you don't talk to me about your prince of spain you make light enough of him don't talk to me about the anger of monsieur de noailles the french ambassador monsieur de noailles is an idiot and i will tell him so to his face as for me i am a woman i want things and then i don't want them i am not made all in one piece that man's life is necessary to my life oh i beg of you don't put on that air of virginal sincerity and good faith i know all your intrigues between us two you know as well as i that he didn't commit the crime for which he is condemned well it is settled i don't want fabiani to die am i the mistress or am i not come sir bailiff let us talk about something else will you i withdraw madame all your nobles have spoken to you through my voice what do i care for my nobles simon renard aside suppose we try the people he goes out with respectful salutation the queen alone he went out with a singular expression that man is capable of arousing rebellion i must hurry off to the city hall what ho someone master enias and joshua appear scene five is that you master enias this man and you you must attend to it that the earl of clan brussel makes his escape at once uh, madame very well i won't trust you i remember you are one of his enemies are there none but enemies of the man i love around me i will wager that this turnkey whom i don't even know he hates him too you are right madam my god my god this simon renard is more a king than i am queen what not one person to trust no one to whom i can give power to plan his escape jane coming out from behind the pillar yes madam i joshua aside jane you who are you ah it is you jane talbot what are you doing here never mind you are here you have come to save fabiani thank you i ought to hate you jane i ought to be jealous of you i have reason enough to be but i am not i love you for loving him in front of the scaffold there is no more jealousy nothing but love you are like me you forgive him i understand men don't understand these things lady jane let us have it clearly understood we are both of us miserable are we not we must save fabiani i have no one but you i must let you do it at least i am sure you will do it with all your heart take charge of it gentlemen both of you do everything that lady jane directs you to do and upon your heads you will be answerable for the execution of her orders embrace me young woman the thames washes the base of the tower on this side i noticed a secret passage a boat at that place and the escape might be made by the thames it is the safest way it will be impossible to get a boat there before an hour that is very long it will soon pass it will be dark too that will be better if her majesty wishes to keep the escape secret perhaps you are right in one hour then i leave you lady jane i must go to the city hall save fabiani make yourself easy madame the queen goes out jane follows her with her eyes joshua friend of stage 
Gilbert was right. She loves Fabiani. Scene 6. Jane to Master Aeneas. You have heard the Queen's commands. A boat there at the base of the tower. The keys of the secret corridors. A cap and a cloak. Impossible to get all out before night. In one hour, my lady. Very well. Go. Leave me with this man. Master Aeneas goes out. Jane follows him with her eyes. Joshua, aside, at Trent stage. This man? It is very natural. One who has forgotten Gilbert will not remember Joshua. He goes to Fabiani's cell and is about to open it. What are you doing there? Forestalling your wishes, my lady. I am opening this door. What door is that? The door of my lord Fabiani's cell. And that one? It is the door to another man's cell. Who is he, that other? Another who is condemned to death. Someone whom you do not know. A workman named Gilbert. Open that door. Joshua, after having opened it. Gilbert. Scene 7. Gilbert, from the interior of his cell. What is wanted? He appears on the threshold. Sees Jane. Leans trembling against the wall. Jane. Lady Jane Talbot. Jane on her knees without lifting her eyes to him gilbert i have come to save you save me listen to me pity me do not crush me i know all that you would say it is all true but don't say it to me i must save you everything is ready the escape is safe let yourself be saved by me just as if i were anybody else i don't ask any more you need never recognize me again you need never know who i am don't forgive me just let me save you, will you? Thank you. It is useless. Why wish to save my life, Lady Jane, if you do not love me? Jane, with joy. Oh, Gilbert, is that what you ask me, truly? Gilbert, do you deign to think of what is passing in this poor girl's heart? Gilbert, is it possible that the love I have for you can interest you, can seem worth thinking about? Oh, I thought it was quite indifferent to you, that you despised me too much to wonder what I did with my heart. Gilbert, if you only knew how these words you have spoken make me feel, oh, it is an unhoped-for gleam of sunshine in my dark night. Oh, listen to me. If I dared to draw near to you, if I dared to touch your garments, if I dared to take your hand in mine, if I dared once more to lift mine eyes to you and to heaven as I did once, do you know what I would say to you, on my knees, prostrate, weeping at your feet, with sobs on my lips and the joy of angels in my heart? I would say, Gilbert, I love you. Gilbert, taking her to his heart with rapture. You love me? Yes, I love you. You love me? My God, she loves me. It is indeed true. She has said it herself. Her lips have spoken it. God in heaven. My Gilbert. You say all is prepared for my escape? Quick, let us hurry. Life, I want to live. Jane loves me. This roof descends on my head and crushes it. I want air. I suffocate here. Let us fly quickly. Let us go, Jane. I want to live. I want to live. I am beloved. Not yet. We must have a boat. We must wait until night. But be easy. You are saved. In less than an hour we will be outside. The Queen is at the City Hall and will not come back so soon as that. I am mistress here. I will explain it all to you. Wait an hour? That is long. Oh, I yearn to get back to life and happiness. Jane, Jane, you are there. I will live. You love me. I am coming back from hell. Restrain me. I will do something bad. I will laugh. I will sing. Ah, you do love, then. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. And listen, Gilbert, believe me, this is the truth, as though I were on my deathbed. I have never loved anyone but you. Even in my fall, even in the midst of my sin, I loved you. Scarcely had I fallen into the arms of that demon who ruined me when I wept for my angel. Forgotten. Forgiven. Never speak of it again, Jane. What do I care for the past? Who could resist your voice? Who would do other than I am doing? Yes, I pardon everything, my well-beloved child. The foundation of love is mercy and pardon, Jane. Jealousy and despair burn the tears in my eyes. But I pardon you. But I thank you. You are the only truly bright thing in this world. At each word that you speak, I feel grief dies. 
and joy is born in my soul. Jane, lift up your head, stand up straight before me there, and look at me. I tell you that you are my child. Always generous, Gilbert, my well-beloved. I wish I were outside now, in our flight far away, free with you. Oh, this night, which will never come, the boat is not there. Jane, we will leave London at once this night. We will leave England. We will go to Venice. Men of my trade make a good deal of money there. You will belong to me. Oh, my God, I am insane. I have forgotten the name you bear. It is too proud a one, Jane. What do you mean? Daughter of Lord Talbot. I know one prouder still. Which? Wife of the workman Gilbert. Jane! Oh, no, don't think I ask so much as that. I know I am unworthy of that. I do not lift my eyes so high. I would never take such an advantage of your pardon. The poor engraver Gilbert shall make no mess alliance with the Countess of Waterford. No, I will follow you. I will love you. I will never leave you. I will lie all day at your feet, all night at your door. I will watch you work. I will help you. I will give you all you need. I will be to you something less than a sister, something more than a dog. And if you ever marry Gilbert, because God will want you to find somebody, some pure woman without stain and worthy of you, well, if you marry, and if your wife is good, if she will let me, I will be your wife's servant. If she won't have me, I will go off, far off, to die where I can. That is the only way I shall ever leave you. If you do not marry, I will stay with you always. I will be gentle and patient. Oh, you shall see. And if people think ill of me because I am with you, well, they can think what they please. I have no longer the right to blush, you see. I am only an unfortunate woman. Gilbert, falling at her feet. You are an angel. You are my wife. Your wife? Oh, you are like God. Your pardon purifies me. Be blessed, Gilbert, for putting this crown upon my brow. Gilbert takes her up and folds her to his heart. While they stand thus in each other's arms, Joshua takes Jane's hand. It is Joshua, Lady Jane. Good Joshua. You did not know me a little while ago. No, I had to begin with him. Joshua kisses her hand. Gilbert, pressing her in his arms. Ah, oh, what happiness! But is it real, all this happiness? For some time a distant noise has been heard. Confused voices, a tumult. It grows dark. What is that noise? He goes to the window which overlooks the street. Oh, my God, let nothing happen. There's a great crowd off there. Pickaxes, pikes, torches. The Queen's pensioners on horseback and fighting. They're all coming this way. What cries? The devil! It looks like a public revolt. If it is only not against Gilbert. Fabiani! Death to Fabiani! Can you hear? Yes. What are they saying? I can't distinguish. Oh, my God! My God! Master Enias and a boatman enter hastily through the concealed door. Scene 8 My Lord Fabiani! my lord not an instant to lose the people know the queen wanting to save your life there is a revolt of the land and populace against you in a quarter of an hour you'll be torn to pieces my lord save yourself here is a cloak and a cap here are the keys here is a boatman don't forget that you owe it all to me my lord make haste lo to boatman remember you are not to hurry Jane hastily covers Gilbert with a cloak and a cap. Lord to Joshua. Heavens, if this man will only not recognize him. Master Aeneas, looking into Gilbert's face. What? Oh, this is not Lord Clambressil. You are not fulfilling the Queen's orders, my lady. You are helping another to escape. All is lost. I ought to have foreseen this. Ah, sir, it is true. Have mercy. Master Aeneas, Lord to Jane. Silence, go on. I have said nothing. I have seen nothing. He goes up stage with an air of indifference. What does he say? Oh, Providence befriends us. Everybody wants to save Gilbert. No, my lady. Everybody wants to destroy Fabiani. During the entire scene, the cries have increased outside. We must hurry, Gilbert. Come quickly. Let him go alone. Leave him. Only for a moment. No woman in the boat if he wanted to arrive safe. It is too light yet. Your dress is white. After the peril is over, you will find each other again. Come this way with me. 
let him go that way joshua is right where will i find you my gilbert under the first arch of london bridge good go quickly the tumult increases oh i wish you were safe away here are the keys there are twelve doors to open and shut between here and the water's edge it will take you a good quarter of an hour a quarter of an hour twelve doors that is frightful gilbert embracing her good-bye jane a few more moments of separation and we will rejoin each other for a lifetime for eternity to the boatman sir i place him in your care master aeneas low to boatman for fear of accident don't hurry gilbert goes out with the boatman he is saved now for us we must shut this cell he shuts the door of gilbert's cell all right come quickly this way he goes out with jane through the other concealed door master aeneas alone fabiani remains in the trap now there is a shrewd little woman whom simon renard would have paid a good deal for how will the queen take all this provided the consequences do not fall on my shoulders the queen and simon renard enter with rapid steps the tumult outside has steadily increased it is night cries of death torches lights sounds of moving masses the click of arms shots the stamping of horses several noblemen with daggers in their hands accompany the queen among them are the herald of england clarence bearing a royal banner and the herald of the order of garter jarathier bearing the banner of that order scene nine the queen low to master aeneas has fabiani escaped not yet not yet giving him a terrible look master aeneas aside the devil the people outside death to fabiani you must make your decision on the spot madame the people demand this man's death the tower is besieged the revolt is formidable your nobles have been cut to pieces on london bridge your majesty's pensioners hold their own yet but just the same your majesty has been chased street by street from the city hall to the tower of london madame elizabeth's followers have joined the people you can tell that by the venom of the mob all this is serious what does your majesty command Fabiani, death to Fabiani. they grew louder and come nearer death to fabiani do you hear that howling populace my lords you must throw a man out to them the rabble is hungry what does your majesty command by heaven my lords it seems to me you all stand trembling around me upon my soul must a woman show you your duty as nobleman to horse my lords to horse are you afraid of the rabble are swords afraid of clubs don't let things go any further yield madame while there is yet time you can yet say the rabble in an hour you will have to say the people the cries increase the noise comes nearer in an hour simon renard going to gallery and returning in a quarter of an hour madame the first wall of the tower is broken down one more step the mob will be here to the, to the tower. tower to, to the, the tower, tower. Fabiani, death, death to Fabiani! How right they are who call the people terrible, Fabiano! Do you want to see him torn to pieces before your eyes? Do you know this is infamous that not one of you stirs? In the name of heaven, defend me, my lords! You, yes, Madame, Fabiano, no. Very well. I will tell you all then. So much the worse for you. Fabiano is innocent fabiano never committed a crime for which he was condemned it was i and this man here and the engraver gilbert we did it all we invented it all we imagined it all it was all a farce contradict me if you dare sir bailiff now gentlemen will you defend him he is innocent i swear it on my head on my crown on my god on my mother's soul he is innocent of the crime it is as true as that you stand there lord clinton defend him annihilate these wretches as you annihilated tom wyatt my brave clinton my old friend my good robert i swear to you that it is false that fabiano tried to assassinate the queen 
there is another queen whom he tried to assassinate england the cries continue outside the balcony upon the balcony i myself will prove to the people that he is not guilty prove to the people that he is not italian when i think it is simon renard one of the cardinal granville's creatures who dare to speak to me like this well open that door open that cell fabiano is there i want to see him i want to speak to him simon renard lo what are you doing for his own sake you needn't let everybody know where he is death, death to, to fabiani long, long live, live elizabeth. elizabeth they cry long live elizabeth now my god my god choose madame with one hand he points to the cell this head to the people with the other hand he designates the crown which the queen wears or that crown to madame elizabeth death death, death. death. Fabiani. Fabiani. elizabeth a stone breaks through a pane of glass near the queen your majesty is destroying herself without saving him the second court is reached what does the queen command you are all cowards and clinton is the worst of all ah clinton i will remember this my friend what does the queen command oh to be abandoned by all of you to have confessed all without obtaining anything what sort of creatures are these noblemen here that populace is infamous i would like to crush them under my feet there are times then when a queen is nothing but a woman you will pay dear for this gentleman what does the queen command the queen crushed whatever you will do what you like you are an assassin aside oh fabiano clarence jaretier come here master aeneas open the great balcony of the gallery the balcony in the back opens simon renard steps out upon it clarence at his right jaretier at his left amen stumbled outside Fabiani! Simon Renard, on the balcony, turned toward the people. In the Queen's name. In the, in queen's, the queen's name. name. Profound silence outside. People, the Queen bids you know this. Today, this very night, one hour after the curfew, Fabiano Fabiani, girl of Clan Brassel, covered with a black veil from head to foot bound with an iron gag a yellow wax candle weighing three pounds in his hand will be led by torchlight from the tower of london through charing cross to the old market-place of the city there to be publicly punished and beheaded for the crimes of high treason and attempt of regicide on the imperial person of the queen immense applause outside Long live the Queen! Death to Simon Renard, continuing. And, in order that no one in this city of London shall ignore it, this is what the Queen orders during the entire journey, which the criminal must make from the Tower of London to the old market-place. The great bell of the Tower shall toll. At the moment of the execution, three cannon-shots will be fired the first when he mounts the scaffold the second when he kneels upon the black cloth the third when his head falls applause illuminate illuminate, illuminate. illuminate. this night the tower and the city of london will be illuminated with lights and torches in sign of joy i have spoken applause god protect the old charter of england God, God protect, protect the, the old charter, charter of England. England. Death, Death to Fabiani! Long, long live Mary! Mary. Long, long live the queen. queen! The balcony is closed. Simon Renard approaches the queen. What I have just done will never be forgiven me by the Princess Elizabeth. Nor by Queen Mary. Leave me, sir. She dismisses them all with a gesture. Simon Renard, lo to Master Aeneas master aeneas look to the execution count upon me simon renard goes out as master aeneas is about to go the queen rushes to him seizes him by arm and drags him violently to the front of the stage scene ten
the people outside whose head is worth most at this moment do you think fabiani's or yours madame you are a traitor madame aside the devil no explanations i swear by my mother if fabiano dies you die but, but madame save fabiano and you save yourself not otherwise death, death to, to fabiani. 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 fabiani save the earl of clanbrassil but the people are out there it is impossible by what means find some what could i do do what you would for yourself the people will keep armed until after the execution to satisfy them somebody must be beheaded anybody you please anybody i please wait madame the execution will be at night by torchlight the criminal covered with a black veil gagged the people kept a long way from the scaffold by the pikemen the same as always it is enough if the people see an head fall the thing is possible if only the boatman is there yet i told him not to hurry he goes to the window which overlooks the thames there he is but we're just in time he leans out of the window a torch in his hand waving his handkerchief then he turns to the queen all right i will answer for lord fabiani madame on your head on my head End of third day, part one. Third day, part two. Mary Tudor by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Third day, part two. Scene. A hall or room into which lead two staircases, one ascending and other descending. The entrance to each of these staircases fills a portion of the back of the stage. The one which ascends ends at the frieze. The one which descends ends underneath. Neither the beginning nor the end is visible. The room is draped with black in peculiar fashion. The wall on the right, the wall on the left, and the ceiling are covered with black cloth on which is a large white cross the background which faces the spectator with a white cloth and a large black cross these black and white draperies continue until they are lost to sight under the staircases to the right and to the left there is an altar draped with black and white decorated as if for a funeral tall candles no priests a few funeral lamps hanging here and there from the vaulted roof light the room and the staircase feebly what really lights the room is the great white cloth in the background through which a reddish light shines as if there were a fiery furnace behind the room is paved with tombstones as the curtain rises the motionless figure of the queen is seen in a black outline on this transparent cloth scene one jane joshua they enter cautiously through a little door behind the black draperies which they push aside where are we joshua on the great landing of the staircase down which the criminals go to execution it was draped this way under henry the eighth no way of getting out of the tower the people are on guard at every exit they want to be sure of getting their criminal this time no one can go out before the execution the proclamation they made from the balcony rings in my ears yet this is a horrible thing joshua oh i've seen many such if only gilbert has been able to escape do you think he is safe joshua i'm sure of it you are sure of it good joshua the tower wasn't surrounded on the water side then when he started the riot wasn't as bad as it was afterward it was a fine riot if you but knew it you are sure that he is safe and waiting for you under the first arch of london bridge where you will meet him before midnight heaven he will be anxious too seeing the shadow of the queen my god what is that joshua joshua low taking her hand silence it is the lioness on the watch while jean looks at this figure in horror a distant voice which seems to come from above pronounces these words slowly and distinctly 
the man covered with a black veil who follows me is the very high and mighty lord fabiano fabiani earl of clambrassil baron of dinan's mondi baron of Dartmouth in devonshire who is to be beheaded at the London market-place for the crimes of regicide and high treason. God have mercy on his soul. Pray for him. Jane, trembling. Joshua, do you hear? Yes, I hear such things every day. A funeral procession appears at the head of the staircase and gradually forms itself on the steps as it descends a man dressed in black is at the head wearing a white banner with a black cross next comes master Aeneas dulverton wearing a great black cloak holding his constable's baton in his hand then a group of halberdiers dressed in red then a man in white wearing a black banner with a white cross to the right and to the left halberdiers bearing torches do you see yes i see such things every day as they are about to reach the stage the procession stops the man covered with a black veil who follows me is the very high and mighty lord fabiano fabiani earl of clambrassil baron of dinan's mondi baron of Dartmouth in devonshire who is to be beheaded at the london market-place for the crimes of regicide and high treason god have mercy on his soul pray for him, for him. The procession slowly crosses the back of the stage. It is a terrible thing we are looking at, Joshua. It freezes my blood. That abominable Fabiani. Peace, Joshua. Very abominable, but very unfortunate. The procession reaches the other staircase. Simon Renard, who appeared at the entrance of the staircase some moments before, and has observed everything, moves aside to let them pass. The procession goes under the arch of the staircase and gradually disappears. Jane, terrified, follows it with her eyes. Simon Renard, after the procession has disappeared. What does this mean? Is that really Fabiani? I thought him not so tall. Has Master Aeneas? Seems to me the Queen kept him near her for a moment. Let us see. He disappears under the staircase, following the procession. Voice, which grows fainter and fainter. The man covered with a black veil who follows me is the very high and mighty Lord Fabiano Fabiani, Earl of Clambrassil, Baron of Dinan's Mondi, Baron of Dartmouth in Devonshire, who is to be beheaded at the London Marketplace for the crimes of regicide and high treason pray for him the great bell will announce his exit from the tower presently perhaps you can make your escape now i must try to find a way wait for me here i will come back are you going to leave me joshua i will be afraid here all alone it will be dangerous for you to wander over the tower with me i must get you away from here remember gilbert is waiting for you gilbert everything for gilbert go joshua goes out oh what a terrible sight when i think that it might have been like this for gilbert she kneels on one of the altar steps oh thank you you are indeed god the saviour you have saved gilbert the cloth at the back opens the queen appears she comes slowly to the front of the stage without seeing jane who turns around the queen my god scene two jane clings to the altar with horror and fixes a look of stupor and terror on the queen's face the queen she stands a few seconds at the front of the stage her glance fixed pale as if absorbed in gloomy thoughts at last she sighs profoundly oh the people she looks round with anxiety and sees jane someone is here oh it is you young woman it is you lady jane I frighten you. Don't be afraid. You know the turnkey Eneas betrayed us. Don't be afraid. I have already told you, child. You have nothing to fear from me. What was your ruin a month ago is your salvation to-day. You love Fabiano. There are only you and I in the whole world to-day who have a heart like that. Only you and I love him. We are sisters. Madame. Yes, you and I. Two women we are all he has. 
Everyone else is against him. A whole city, a whole nation, a whole world. An equal struggle of love against hate. Love for Fabiano is a sad thing, a fatal, a horror-stricken thing. It has a pallid brow like yours, tear-filled eyes like mine. It hides itself close to a funeral altar. It entreats with your lips, it curses with mine. But hate for Fabiano is a proud thing, radiant, triumphant. It is well-armed and victorious. It has the court, the people, the crowded streets. It munches cries of death and cries of joy at the same time. It is magnificent, haughty, powerful. It illuminates a whole city surrounding a scaffold. Love, here it is, two women weeping in a tomb. Hate, there it is. She pulls the white cloth violently aside, which reveals the balcony. And beyond the balcony, almost out of sight, the whole city of London, brilliantly illuminated. What is visible of the Tower of London is also illuminated. Jane fixes her amazed eyes on the startling scene, the reflection of which lights up the theatre. Oh, infamous city, rebellious city, a cursed city, monstrous city, who soaks her holiday dress in blood, and who holds the torch for the executioner. You are afraid of it, aren't you, Jane? Doesn't it seem to you, as it does to me, that it cowardly defies us both, that it is watching us with its hundred thousand flaming eyes, us, feeble forsaken women that we are, alone and lost in this sepulchre? Jane, do you hear it howl and laugh, that horrible city? Oh, England, all England to him who will destroy London! Would that I could change those torches into fiery brands, those lights into flames, and that illuminated city into a city of fire! A tremendous outburst from people outside. Applause, confused cries. There he is, there he is. Death to Fabiani! The great bell of the tower begins to toll. At this sound, the queen breaks into a terrible peal of laughter. God, the unfortunate man is leaving the tower. You laugh, madame? Yes, I laugh. She laughs. Yes, and you will laugh too. Let me wrap those hangings first. It seems to me all the time as if we were not alone, as if that frightful city could see and hear us. She drops the white curtain and comes back to Jane. Now that he is gone, now that there is no more danger, I can tell you about it. Laugh, laugh, let us both laugh at those execrable people who drink blood. Oh, it is grand, Jane. Jane, you tremble for Fabiano. Be at ease, laugh with me. I tell you, Jane, the man they've got, the man who's going to die, the man they think is Fabiano, is not Fabiano. <laughs> she laughs. Not Fabiano? No. Then who is it? The other. What other? You know well enough. You know him. That worksman. That man. Besides, what does it matter? Jane, trembling with terror. Gilbert? Yes, Gilbert. That is the name. Madame, oh no, madame, don't say that, madame. Gilbert, it would be too horrible. He has escaped. He was escaping when they seized him. They put him under the black veil in Fabiano's place. It is night. The people won't know. Rest easy. Jane, with a frightful cry. Ah, oh, madame, but the man I love, it is Gilbert. What? What do you say? Are you going crazy? Did you deceive me too? Ah, it is Gilbert whom you love. Well, what does that matter to me? Jane, at the Queen's feet, broken-hearted, sobbing, dragging herself on her knees, her hands clasped, the great bell tolls through all the scene. Madame, just for pity, Madame, in the name of heaven, Madame, by your crown, by your mother, by the angels, Gilbert, Gilbert, it will make me mad. Madame, save Gilbert. That man, he is my life. That man, he is my husband. That man, I have told you that he did everything for me, that he brought me up, that he adopted me, that beside my cradle he took the place of my father, who died for your father. Madame, you see that I am a poor, wretched creature, and that it isn't right to be too hard on me. 
what you said to me just now struck such a terrible blow that i truly don't see how it is i have the strength to speak to you i am just saying what i can you see but you must stop the execution right away stop the execution put it off until to-morrow just time to have things understood that is all the people can wait until to-morrow i know we will see what we can do no don't shake your head there is no danger for your fabiano you can put me in his place under the black veil at night who will know but you must save gilbert what difference does it make whether it be he or i and since since i want to die oh my god that bell that frightful bell every knell of that bell is a step toward the scaffold every knell of that bell strikes me full in the heart do it madam be merciful no danger for your fabiano let me kiss your hands i love you madam i never said it before but i love you dearly you are a great queen see see how i kiss your beautiful hands give an order to stop the execution there is time yet i'm sure we can do it they go so slowly it is a long way from the tower to the old market-place the man on the balcony said they would pass through charing cross there is a quicker way a man on horseback could get there in heaven's name madam be merciful try to put yourself in my place imagine that i am queen and you the poor young woman and you would weep as i do and i would pardon 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 oh that is what i was afraid of that my tears would hinder me from speaking oh right away stop the execution there won't be any trouble madame no danger for fabiano i swear it to you don't you really think you ought to do what i say madame the queen touched and lifting her up i wish i could poor girl and yes you are weeping as i wept what you feel i have just felt myself and my anguish makes me understand yours look i am weeping too it is very sad my poor child it seems to me too they might have taken somebody else Turconel, for instance but he's too well known they had to have some obscure man he was the only one they could get hold of i explain all this so that you can understand don't you see my god there are fatalities like that we get caught we can't do anything i am listening to you madame i am like you i have got many things to say but i would like to have the order to suspend the execution signed and the man sent off you see it would be finished then we could talk better afterward oh that bell forever that bell what you want is impossible lady jane oh no it is possible a man on horseback there is a very short way by the wharf i can go i it is quite possible it is easy you see i talk very quietly but the people won't have it they will come back here and massacre everybody in the tower and fabiano is here yet can't you understand you are trembling poor child i am like you i tremble also in your turn put yourself in my place i might easily not take the trouble to explain all this to you you see i do what i can don't think about his gilbert any more jane it is over resign yourself over no it is not over no as long as that horrible bell tolls it is not over resign myself to gilbert's death do you think i am going to let gilbert die like that no madam oh i am wasting my time oh you won't listen to me very well if the queen won't hear me the people will they are good the people if you but knew it they are in the court yet you can do what you like with me afterward i am going to tell them they are cheated that it is not fabiani it's a poor workman named gilbert a workman like themselves stop you wretched child she seizes her arm and looks at her fixedly and resentfully this is the way you thank me is it i am patient and gentle with you i weep with you and all at once you get wild and furious well my love is just as great as yours and my hand is more powerful you shall not stir your lover what do i care for your lover are all the girls in england coming to ask me about their lovers now by my soul i save my own as well as i can and at the cost of everything which stands in his way you must look after yours let me go oh i curse you you wretched wicked woman hush i will not hush do you want me to tell you what i am thinking of now i don't believe the man who is going to die out there is my gilbert what are you saying i don't know but i saw him pass by under that black veil and if it had been my gilbert something would have stirred in me something would have roused itself in my heart and would have cried out to me gilbert it is gilbert but i felt nothing at all it is not gilbert 
"'What are you saying? Ah, my God, you are crazy. What you have said is idiotic, but it terrifies me just the same. Ah, you have roused one of the secret terrors of my own heart. Why did that riot prevent me from looking after him myself? Why did I entrust to any one but myself the safety of my Fabiano? Eneas Dulverton is a traitor. Perhaps Simon Renard was there. What if I have been betrayed a second time by Fabiano's enemies? What if is it Fabiano himself? What? Ho! Oh! Quick! Someone! Come! Someone! Two jailers appear. To the first. You! Run! Here is my royal signet. Tell them to suspend the execution. To the old market-place! To the old market-place! There is a shorter way, you said, Jane. By the wharf. The queen, the jailer. By the wharf. A horse. Go quick! The jailer goes out. To the second jailer. You, go at once to Edward the Confessor's tower. The two cells of the condemned criminals are there. There is a man in one of them. Bring him here at once. The jailer goes out. I tremble. My knees sink under me. I have not strength enough to go myself. Ah, you have made me as mad as yourself. Miserable girl, you have made me as wretched as yourself. I curse you as you cursed me. My God, will the man get there in time? What a torturing anxiety! I can't see anything more. All this trouble in my soul. Does the bell toll yet? Is it for Gilbert? Is it for Fabiano? The bell ceases. Then the procession is on the place for the execution. Will the man get there in time? A cannon shot is heard. Heaven! He's ascending the scaffold. Second cannon. He is kneeling. It is horrible. Third cannon. Ah! There is only one alive now. In a moment we will know which one. My God, let the man who comes in be Fabiano. My God, let it be Gilbert. The curtain at the back opens. Simon Renard appears, holding Gilbert by the hand. Gilbert! They rush into each other's arms. And Fabiano? Dead. Dead! Dead! Who has dared? I have dared. I have saved the Queen of England. End of Act 4 End of Mary Tudor by Victor Hugo